Now we're ready to model the structural walls and foundation elements. And we'll start by creating some interior shear walls at the building core, around the stairwell and central lobby. Here from the 3D view, let's move down the top of the section box so we can see the elements at level 1. Then we'll adjust the visibility graphics overrides to turn off the visibility of the structural walls and turn on the non-structural walls in our host model. Then we'll switch to the Revit Links tab and turn on the visibility of our linked model so we can review the locations where these structural walls were placed in the architectural model. And when we zoom in on the 3D structural frame view, we can see that walls have been placed on each side of the central lobby, and these are the ones that we'll be replacing with shear walls to resist lateral forces. Let's open the structural plan for level 1. Then we'll use the VG shortcut to open the visibility graphics overrides for this view. Again, we'll switch to the Revit Links tab and turn on the visibility of the linked model so we can trace the locations of the walls placed there. Let's zoom in on that building core area where we'll place our structural walls. Switch to the Home tab and open the Structural Wall tool. Now we'll edit the wall types to create a new type with the properties we need. Let's duplicate the generic 8-inch wall and call this new type Concrete 6-inch. Then we'll edit its structure. We'll use Cast and Place Concrete. and we'll set the thickness to 6 inches. Click Apply to lock in these settings, then OK. Now we'll adjust the settings in the Options bar so the top constraint for the new walls will be level 2. Now we can draw our new wall right on top of the one in the linked model, clicking its beginning point and its end point. We want to place a similar wall on the opposite side of the building core, so we can use a reference plane that was placed through the center of the building in the linked model as an axis to mirror this wall to the opposite side. Returning to the 3D view, if we use the VG shortcut and turn off the visibility of the linked model, we'll be able to see the new structural walls that we've added to our host model. Now we'll turn our attention to the lower level and change the types of the walls that will be below grade to retaining walls. We'll change the walls at the sides and the rear of the lower level to be retaining walls. Let's choose one of these walls, then use the type selector to choose retaining 12 inch concrete as the new type for this wall. The top and bottom constraints were copied from the linked model so the new retaining wall already has the right settings. Revit will display a coordination monitor alert because the thickness of a shared element has changed. Next, we'll place some foundation elements to support our structure where loads are transferred to the ground. We'll start with the foundation slab under the lower level. This was copied from the linked model as a generic 12-inch floor. Let's switch to the Home tab and we'll use the Foundation Slab tool to create a new foundation that will replace the generic floor. We'll use the Pick Line tool to draw boundary lines at the edges of the existing floor. Let's adjust this edge slightly using the Align tool to move it from the face of the wall to the edge of the floor and lock it to that edge. Now we can use the Trim tool to clean up the boundary and form one continuous loop. Let's return to the 3D structural frame view. Having created the new foundation slab, we can now delete the generic floor. We may have to tab a few times to select it and then delete it. Again, we'll get a coordination monitor alert, in this case because a shared element has been deleted. Let's select the slab and confirm that we've kept the right one. Now let's return to the Home tab and add some more foundation elements. We'll open the Wall Foundation tool, then select a wall to place a foundation under. The new foundation is placed under the full length of the retaining wall at the edge of the foundation slab. Then we'll also create some isolated foundations for the concrete columns. We don't have any isolated foundation families loaded into the project, so we need to load one from the library. They're in the Structural Foundation folder. We'll select Footing Rectangular. Then choose the Add Columns Placement option to place multiple. Set the placement level to lower level. Then select each of the columns. A ghost of the foundation appears under each of the columns selected, but we still need to click the Finish checkmark in the Multiple panel to complete our selection and place the actual foundations. Notice how the isolated foundations automatically merge with the slab and create a single monolithic foundation.